everyone and welcome back to the next chapter. I am so glad to be back with you this month. I apologize for the hiatus we took in November. Uh, we spent a lot of time at the library uh, bringing in furniture and moving books and getting organized and unfortunately a lot of the video programming kind of took a back seat. So I am back and wanted to spend some time with you today. We are going to talk about something that I really enjoy, optical illusions. Now, when I went to find books on optical illusions at the library, there was only one. All the others were checked out, which helps me know I am not alone. There are a lot of you out there that really enjoy optical illusions as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, what optical illusions are and how you can make your own in just a little bit. But first, we're going to start with a, a somewhat famous story. Some of you may have read when you were younger called Duck. Rabbit. This is written by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. And while short, I want you to pay a lot of attention to the artwork. So, go, um, because we're looking for those optical illusions that exist in this story. So, if you already know what that means, be on the watch. And if you don't know what that means, enjoy the story. Hey, look, a, a duck. That's not a duck. That's a rabbit. Are you kidding me? It is totally a duck. It is for sure a rabbit. See, there's his bill. What are you talking about? Those are his ears, silly. It's a duck, and he's about to eat a piece of bread. Do you see it? I see it, right? It looks like a duck eating a piece of bread. I think it's a duck. No, it's a rabbit, and he's about to eat a carrot. Do you see that? I think I was wrong. Now I think it's a rabbit. Wait, listen. Did you hear that? I heard duck sounds. Quack. That's funny, because I distinctly heard rabbit sounds. Sniff, sniff. Now the duck is wading through the swamp. No, the rabbit is hiding in the grass. There, see? It's flying. Flying? It's hopping. Look, the duck is so hot, he's getting a drink. No, the rabbit is so hot, he's cooling off his ears. Here, look at the duck through my binoculars. Sorry, it's still a rabbit. Here, ducky ducky. Here, you cute little rabbit. Come on, cute little rabbit. Oh great, you scared him away. I didn't scare him away, you scared him away. You know, maybe you were right. Maybe it was a rabbit. The thing is, now I'm actually thinking it was a duck. Well, anyway, now what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? Hey, look, an anteater. That's no anteater, that's a brachiosaurus. Is it an anteater? Is it a brachiosaurus? The end. Is it a duck or is it a rabbit? That's what optical illusions are all about, right? Tricking our eye. It could be a duck. It could also be a rabbit. I can see a duck and I can see a rabbit. So what is an optical illusion? We read our story. We saw some ducks. We saw some rabbits. An optical illusion is something that looks one way, but is actually something else. And I looked up the official definition for us. So. An optical illusion 
is an illusion caused by the visual system and characterized by a visual percept that arguably appears to differ from reality. Wow, did you understand that? I had to read it several times. So, an optical illusion is an illusion. What is an illusion? Something that is not true, right? Something that appears one way but is actually something else. It's an illusion, often talked about in terms of magic shows or with magicians. Um, if you've read Harry Potter, he has an invisibility cloak that turns him invisible. But it's just an illusion, right? He's still there. He's still in the room. He's still a physical body. If you bumped into him, you would bump into him. It's just an illusion. So an optical illusion is an illusion caused by the visual system. So a visual system is our eyes. Optics, also meaning eyes and light, right? It's the way that our eyes and our light and light entering our eyes interprets information. <clears throat> and it appears to differ from reality. So what we're seeing, an illusion entering our eyes, looks different from reality. So like in our book, it's hard to tell. It's, is, is it a rabbit? Is it a duck? It could be either. In this book's case, Optical Magic, um, the illusion here, when I look at this, this looks like it's moving. I don't know how well that's gonna come through the camera lens, but when I look at this, all these lines are kind of moving toward the middle and spinning. But is the book actually moving? No, not at all, right? It's just, it's just there, it's a hard book, but it looks like it's spinning, and that's part of what creates the optical illusion. Years ago, there was a very famous drawing done that was the inspiration for our picture book. <clears throat> In this classic illustration, do you see a rabbit facing right or do you see a duck facing left? I'm gonna move it way up here for the camera. So once again, do you see a duck or do you see a rabbit? If at any point when I'm sharing these optical illusions you want to pause the video so you can look at them a little longer or up close, uh, feel free to do that. Is it a duck? Is it a rabbit? The very first optical illusion that I actually remember seeing is this one. Is it an old lady or a young woman? What do you see? You see an old lady with a hawk nose and a covering over her hair, or do you see a young lady with a necklace? Is it an old woman or a young lady? This is when I first realized I really enjoyed optical illusions. I like the way they play with your mind. A lot of optical illusions are based on lines or geometry. So if you flip through the book, you'll see a lot that look like this that are different line patterns, and when you look at them up close, they do different things. Some of them swirl towards the middle, some of them appear to shift, some of them actually create other shapes, kind of tricking your mind into other shapes. So, you may not be able to enjoy these as well through the video camera, but feel free to come borrow Optical Magic or some of the other Optical Illusion books from the library and spend some time with them, because they're really, really fun, especially some of the line um, designs that I think would be easier to enjoy in person. So we are actually going to draw our own optical illusion today. So I'm going to have you get some supplies. I'm going to tell you what you need and then if you need to pause this video and go gather your supplies feel free to do that. You're going to need a little bit of a workspace so let me move some of my things. You're going to need a ruler. You're going to need a writing utensil, a pen or a pencil is fine. I'm gonna use a Sharpie just so that you guys can see my drawing a little bit better. And you're gonna need just a plain piece of white scrap paper. It, you're only gonna need one side. So if you just find a coloring page or something you've already used, that's absolutely fine. So those three things, all right? And pause the video and go grab them. And I'll meet you right back here. Are you all set? Paper, ruler, pen. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to measure four inches on our ruler. So we've got one, two, three, four inches. 
All right, and unfortunately you guys are not gonna be able to see what I'm drawing. It's kind of below your eyesight, but I will hold it up to show you. So we are going to draw one four inch line right in the middle of the paper. Like this, all right? One four inch line. And then right below it, you're going to draw another four inch line. So that you have two. All right, and if you want, go ahead and pause this whenever you need to so that you can um, take this at your own pace. Once you have your two four inch lines, you are going to need to find one inch on your ruler, so just one inch. And we're gonna draw two one inch lines off the end of our already existing top line. So I'm gonna show you, because they're gonna go off at an angle, like we're making arrows. So one, two. So one inch, now we have an arrow. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other end. So we've got one and two. What do you think? All right. So you have an arrow pointing away on each end. And then we're gonna draw arrows pointing um, out on the other end. So, for example, you're going to need that same one-inch ruler mark, and we're going to go out and make a tail like this, All right? So sort of like a V that's touching, a sideways V that's touching your line, all right? And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to use your one-inch mark on your ruler and you're gonna draw two lines out, like a V, like this. So you should have one line on top with the arrows pointing out, and one line on the bottom with your arrows pointing in. Okay, so here is the trick question, right? Which one of these is longer? Now it looks like this bottom one is longer, right? That this one's shorter. But what do we know? Because we used our ruler and we measured them. They are both, what? Exactly four inches. And then down here, four inches. Those lines are exactly the same. And we know that because we drew them, right? We measured them out at four inches each, but the optical illusion that's created by changing the ends is that the line on the bottom is much longer. You just created your own optical illusion. There are some great books at the library that are full of other optical illusions that I would encourage you to check out. Another one of my favorites is something called a thermotrope. And you it's a round circle, and on one side there's a cage, and on the other side there's a bird. And you put it on a stick, and then you rub it between your hands. This is an easy one to find guides for online, parents. And as you spin it, it will look like the bird is in the cage because your eye is not as quick as the spinning of the thermotrope. So check that out online. That can be your homework for today. And if you make one, feel free to show comments uh, or to post in the comments. Post your optical illusions in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys did. If you have a favorite optical illusion, I would also love to see that as well. Thanks for joining me today. I will be back uh, in January with our next next chapter. But in the meantime, I will be sharing some holiday stories online, so stay tuned for those. And for those of you who usually visit with Santa at the library, there is a video currently on our Facebook page from Santa sharing some updates. He will not be at the library this year, which is kind of a bummer, but um, for those of you who are interested in connecting with him, that video will tell you how. Have a wonderful rest of your week, everyone.